Hello, this is Katani Alvin from England and uh, I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are. Some information about the Muller Report. And to start with, we've got um, Mark Levine. Then I've got something that Lyndon LaRouche Pack or LaRouche Pack brought up. Very interesting. So this is Mark Levine. Part two of the Muller Report is a 200 page op ed that should never have been written. Okay, let's list, watch this. Here we go. Levin, good morning to you, Mark. Good morning, and it's always good to wake up to a slip and fall lawyer like Jerry Nadler. <laughs> and uh, they'll bring their lawsuit and they'll lose. Uh, so this is all about the press. And I'd like to get to that in a minute, but if I could talk about this report. Everybody's focused on volume two, aren't they? Including us. Volume two. What did McGahn say and why did the president tell McGahn not to say this? Why do we keep focusing on this? This report, volume two, doesn't have a syllable of legal significance. There's not a syllable of law in it. Did you hear him? Doesn't have a syllable of legal significance. It doesn't matter what McGahn said or what the president said. None of it's been tested in a court of law. There's been no um, uh, challenge to it. There's been no cross-examination. Nothing. That's why Mueller wrote this. This is a political document that he should never have written. A political document that's 200 pages long that the press keeps focusing on. That's why he and Weissman and the others wrote it, because he knew you all, he knew CNN would be obsessed with it. He knew that uh, MSNBC would be obsessed with it. This is an op-ed. This is a 200-page op-ed. That's all this is. No prosecutor who wouldn't want to be disbarred would ever produce anything like this, talking, well, this guy said this, and why did the president say that? How do you know? Well, the prosecutor said. Well, who gives a damn what the prosecutor said? He's not God. He's not a judge. He's but not Mark, a jury. But the White House counsel. Doesn't whether or not so the president what? told... Doesn't whether the president told the truth or not matter to you? It matters completely to me. So how do you know this is truthful, Ed? He's the White House counsel. You think he lied? How do you know this is truthful, Ed? You have I, no idea. You know that the prosecutor put words in here that he was told by another individual that has never been challenged. president says he didn't say that. So you have no idea. I have no idea. That's why we have a court of law. That's why prosecutors, damn it, are not supposed to write essays like this. Now we have a special counsel. And the Democrats knew a special counsel could write a report. They're not focused on volume one, which is legal, which does cite law, which was an investigation that found no collusion. That was the purpose of the investigation. Obstruction was not the purpose of the investigation. And he didn't have an obstruction case against the President of the United States, or he would have brought it. I'm using plain English so even Joe Scarborough and Jake Tapper can understand this. Volume 2 is crap. Volume 2 was written for slip and fall lawyer Nadler, slip and fall lawyer Schiff. That's why he wrote it. He knew the media would run with it. Volume 1... Mr. Mueller should have come up to a microphone six, 12 months into his investigation and announced to the American people, I have great news. The president didn't collude. His campaign didn't collude. There's no collusion. I'm shutting down this investigation. I got Manafort. I'll give it to the U.S. attorney in Virginia. I'll give this one to the Southern District of New York. He didn't do it. Why didn't he do that? And right to the end. They're trying to get the president's in-person testimony about something he knew never happened. Collusion. And yet, why is this report even faulty? How can you talk about Russia interference in our election and ignore the Hillary Clinton campaign and the DNC and the senior level of the FBI that's been wiped out by their own conduct? How in the world can you do that, not interview Barack Obama and Susan Rice and all the rest of them? This is a hack job now. It's, it makes a complete nonsense of the whole Mueller report. Right. A brilliant man, Mark Levine. A brilliant man and rightfully angry. Okay, we're going on to another one. Now, we've got a LaRouche pack. I believe it's by Barbara Boyd. And it's Russiagate 
sabotage Trump's foreign policy. That's why Trump fired Comey. Interesting. When I read this, that was the first time I'd heard of that. There is one major story buried in the scurrilous Mueller report which must be made known internationally immediately. As LaRouche Pack Barbara Boyd writes in her report on the Mueller report, in the original letter which Trump dictated to Stephen Miller, firing Comey, Donald Trump said that Comey's refusal to state publicly, this is in square brackets, that Trump was not a target, was end of brackets, was specifically inhibiting what the president wanted to do with Russia. With respect to trade and with respect to collaboration on eliminating ISIS. With the intervention of the same staff whom the media are portraying as unsung heroes. Rod Rosenstein's screed referencing Comey's misconduct in the Clinton investigation was substantiated as the reason for Comey's firing. This, of course, created the entirely false narrative that the president had covered up his real reason for firing Comey. Similarly, Mueller's report as the first of ten events characterized as potentially constituting obstruction of justice states. On June the 16th, 2015, Donald J. Trump declared his intent to seek nomination as the Republican candidate for the president. By early 2016, he distinguished himself among Republican candidates by speaking of closer ties with Russia, saying he would get along well with Russian President Vladimir Putin, questioning whether the NATO alliance was obsolete and praising Putin as a strong leader, the press reported that Russian political analysis and commentators perceived Trump as favorable to Russia. But far from implying obstruction of justice, this is why the American people elected him. End the endless wars, Trump told the American people, and work with Russia to fight terrorism. Because remember, Russia was actually doing a great deal to helping Syria clear the ISIS out of Syria. He was helping Bashar Assad, President Bashar Assad, and jolly good too. But far from implying obstruction of justice, this was why the American people elected end the endless wars, Trump told the American people, and work with Russia to fight terrorism. No more regime change wars to overthrow governments deemed anti-democratic by the British and their assets in the United States. Being friends with Russia is a good thing, not a bad thing, Trump said over and over again. But this, says Mueller, is tantamount to treason, working with America's leading adversary, a characterization of Russia asserted by the same corrupt intelligence operatives in the Obama administration who worked hand in hand with the British intelligence directors from the MI6 and CHQ to carry out a coup against their lost colony in the Americas. The American people must be informed it will not come from the fake news outlets who, despite differences in their views of Trump, all maintain constant barrage of demonizing hysteria against Russia and China. Now, there is more, but I'm up to my 15 minutes thereabout. So the British establishment have been trying their best 
to get a third world war going and they want to have it with China and Russia and that is you know I, I let you connect the dots this is Catania Alvin saying thank you everyone for your remarks thank you for any contributions donating as well is wonderful and have a wonderful day and this after Easter month and waiting for the FISA report to be opened. God bless you all. Katania Alvin saying good night. Bye bye.